Hey guys, Dr. Lara. Today I'm here with Ruby. Ruby is one of my dogs and she is a, if you haven't seen her before, she is a, what we call a Cavapoo and she is a mix of a toy poodle and a King Charles Cavalier Spaniel. Um, so the topic for today is what we call collapsing trachea. Now, what the trachea is, is the trachea is the windpipe uh, of the uh, dogs, cats, humans, we all have it. And the trachea or the windpipe is made up of what we call these cartilaginous rings that are in the shape of a C. And what they do is that cartilage provides structure and some shape to our windpipe so it doesn't just like fall down on itself and so with collapsing trachea what ends up happening is um, the cartilage in the rings tends to weaken and so what will end up happening is depending on the severity of the collapse it can collapse just a little bit a little bit more or all the way um, when it collapses it does elicit or cause the patients to cough and so that's that's something that typically um, dogs may be born with it or you know so the ages can range anywhere from most commonly between 4 to 14 years of age uh, it is also something that is common in very small breed dogs so chihuahuas yorkies uh, toy poodles um, shih tzus maltesers uh, the list goes on i typically i would say anything that's 15 pounds or less is most likely going to be uh, very prone to this per particular condition. Now, the other thing that norm, that, or the next thing rather that we would go ahead and discuss is, okay, well, what are some symptoms? Well, if you notice that your dog, when you're walking your dog and your dog is pulling on the leash and you notice that they start coughing, um, that's a potential sign. Um, if you go ahead and you're rubbing your dog for whatever reason and you kind of just rub their throat a little bit. So that is typically the test that I will do to go ahead and determine if dogs have a windpipe. Now granted, if I do that same <coughs> same thing to myself, I do elicit a cough on me. Uh, but what I have noticed is if I go ahead and do a tracheal palpation on larger breed dogs, I almost never, if they have a healthy windpipe, can never elicit that kind of response. Um, so in regards to the, the, the other ways to confirm the diagnosis and also to get an idea of what kind of, um, collapsing trachea, because collapsing trachea can happen in different spots. It can happen just in one spot. It can happen in multiple spots. And the way that we break down the trachea is between the extra thoracic. So that means outside of the windpipe of the rib cage and then the intrathoracic. So that means once the windpipe goes into the rib cage, now this is all considered an intrathoracic trachea. And so there are different spots at where that can happen. Um, X-rays is one of the ways that typically we will be able to go ahead and see the collapsing trachea. Sometimes it can be a little bit more challenging to see on X-rays depending on the different patients. And so that is something where uh, the next thing that we would most likely do is we would do what's called a fluoroscopy. Fluoroscopy is something that um, is essentially, it's kind of like a video x-ray. Um, it's not something that's typically going to be available at all practices. Um, we have uh, access to it because we do happen to have a company who does mobile CTs and in that same, uh, that same equipment can also be used for fluoroscopy. So that's something that's very helpful for us. Um, the history is very, very um, important uh, for us in regards to um, helping to get a diagnosis as well. Now, in regards to the different things that you can do to treat the collapsing trachea. So there are some different medications that can be used. Some cough suppressants could potentially be used to help. Um, they could also be using some steroids to reduce the inflammation on the windpipe. Um, any sort of little thing once they have a collapsing trachea is going to elicit a cough response and that's just going to make it that much worse. Um, something called uh, bronchodilators. So that's something that helps to open up the lungs and help to reduce the, the cough reflex and that kind of stuff. 
Um, it is something where um, you do have to be careful with the bronchodilators because sometimes it can actually cause the patients to become agitated, can cause an increased heart rate. So that's something that we want to go ahead and, and be careful with. A lot of times we will start with a lower dose and then we will typically work our way up to a, a higher dose. The drugs that uh, typically we will use will be an, uh, theophylline. Um, and then the other things that we can do is um, you can also use something called um, Adequan. Adequan is something that's supposed to help with the um, chondroitin as well as the glycoaminoglycan. Those are some big words. Essentially, um, those are some things that helped to make up the cartilage um, in the windpipe. And so we want to make sure that we support the body as much as possible by that. Now, in some cases where patients have a really severe uh, tracheal collapse, um, they can potentially be a candidate for what we call a stent. And so what that is, is a surgical implant where they put it into the windpipe and they go ahead and you know prop the windpipe open the whole time. The issue with that is that those patients are still going to cough, but they're not going to be in respiratory distress because these patients that have really bad uh, collapsing trachea sometimes can turn blue uh, because they're not getting enough oxygen. And so that is something where when we have, you know, when the patients are really, really bad, at that point, we can consider doing uh, a, the, the tracheal stent. Again, it is not something that is done very casually. It is something where only a select number of patients uh, will do are, are good candidates for it. Otherwise, we typically medically manage these patients. One of the other things, or one of the last things to be aware of is a lot of times um, there are different things that can make the collapsing trachea worse or that are tied to collapsing trachea. So obesity is one thing. You don't wanna have any extra weight on your dog. So that's super important. Uh, endocardiosis, uh, so that is tied to uh, inflammation in the heart. Um, periodontal disease. Now these two are actually tied together in humans. Um, they have been shown that people who have periodontal disease are prone to heart valve infections. So we really want to go ahead and minimize the uh, amount of periodontal disease, which the smaller breed dogs are super prone to. So if your dog has um, collapsing trachea, it's a, that much more of a reason for you to really stay on top of your dog's dental health. Um, otherwise, you know, there are a couple of other things that the dogs are prone to with collapsing trachea, but that would be something that you want to go ahead and talk to your veterinarian about to help make sure that you guys are all on the same page and you're doing everything possible to keep your pet as healthy as possible for as long as possible. If you guys found this video helpful, yes, we're finishing up. I know, I know. Um, if you guys found this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions about this particular topic, please leave it in the comment box. Um, and if you know somebody who needs to watch this video, please share it with them. And if you guys want to help us out, um, go ahead and just take care of yourselves and take care of your fur babies. Thanks for watching and have a great day.